to give up. She says the result, the new you, is worth it. Next at 6 on News Channel 8, a deadly train accident kills a grandmother and her grandchild, leaving a second grandchild fighting for her life. An escaped prisoner in Hartford has just been captured. We're live with the details. Plus, court action today to protect those involved in a deadly crash on Avon Mountain. And a postcard from the past brings back fond memories for one family. Jeff? And I've got some rain in your future. All the details in the eight-day forecast. News Channel 8 at 6 starts now. Now, with coverage you can count on, this is News Channel 8 at 6. Good evening, everybody. We continue to follow breaking news out of Hartford, where an escaped prisoner considered dangerous was caught just a short time ago. The escapee took off from Hartford Hospital while undergoing a medical evaluation. News Channel 8's Jamie Muir live in Hartford with the latest. Jamie? Keith and Jocelyn, good evening. It has been an intense search, actually one that involved both state police and Hartford police. Actually, you can hear Trooper 1, Connecticut State's Police helicopter above me here in just about a few minutes ago, we just saw basically an army just cascading into Troop H here because Brian Bruyard has been caught, we're told, somewhere in the 100 block of Asylum Avenue. Now, take a look at some video from just moments ago. Bruyard, who is being held at Whining Forensics in Middletown, as you mentioned, Jocelyn, was brought to Hartford for a medical procedure. Now, once the procedure was over, it is then when police tell us he escaped. The escape patient it was learned had been remanded to by Superior Court to the Whiting Forensic Facility in Middletown as a result of a 1999 criminal case. Today, this patient was transported by ambulance from that facility in Middletown to Hartford Hospital for a medical procedure. The patient was able to escape from custody after he was treated at Hartford Hospital as was walking from the facility to a waiting ambulance to be transported back to the Whiting Forensic Institute in Middletown. And as Keith mentioned at the top of the show, police were handling this very seriously because they said he was considered dangerous. Actually, Sergeant Paul Vance telling us earlier tonight that Bruyard has a violent history. But again, good news now, Bruyard has been caught, we're told, somewhere in the 100 block of Asylum Avenue. And as soon as we get more information, we'll be sure to let you know. For now, though, we are live in Hartford. I'm Jamie Muro, News Channel 8. Now to a tragedy on the train tracks in Waterford. A routine morning changed in an instant for one family. A grandmother and child were killed when a high-speed train plowed into a car. We have live team coverage beginning at the scene in Waterford with News Channel 8's Tina Detell. Tina? Well, Keith and Jocelyn, this railroad crossing on Minor Lane is really the only place in Waterford where traffic crosses the high-speed railroad tracks. Now, all afternoon, Amtrak workers have been here manning this track. They've also been testing the gates and lights to make sure they are working perfectly. And more importantly, right now, they say they are trying to find out why this crash happened. A nightmare realized a grandmother bringing her two grandchildren to school is hit by a high-speed train, the Amtrak Acela. Their car crushed in an instant. This is a terrible accident. Um, and one first selectman Paul Eckerd says has not happened at this Waterford Railroad crossing on Minor Lane in 28 years. He says 61-year-old Patricia Metzermacher was killed in the crash, along with her 8-year-old grandson Zachary. His 4-year-old sister Courtney, who was in the back seat of the sedan, was initially airlifted to the hospital with serious injuries. After the crash, Amtrak workers tested the signals several times. They and Waterford police are investigating why this happened. As eyewitnesses report to the investigators that the gates were operational and fully operational. But there's nothing we can change about it other than to try to determine what happened. Initial reports indicate none of the 116 passengers or four crew members on board the train were injured. The crash, which occurred shortly before 8 this morning, did hold up rail service for several hours. The Acela train has the ability to go up to 100 miles an hour, but the speed limit in this area is 60 miles an hour. An advocacy group pushing for improved rail service wants to see these ground crossings become a thing of the past. In Waterford, this is the only such crossing along the Amtrak line. But nationwide, the group says there are 240,000 of them. Uh, in Europe, where they've been more intelligent about this, and in Japan, where they've also been more intelligent than we've been, uh, they have great separation for high-speed lines, which means there's either a bridge or a tunnel or no crossing at all. 
Now, in regards to this accident, it is still not known whether or not there was a mechanical reason or a medical reason for this crash. Now, investigators say they may not have those answers for a couple of weeks. That is because of a couple of reasons. They say it is because the National Transportation Safety Board is involved and also because investigators are waiting for a medical report on the driver of the car. We are live in Waterford, Tina Detell, News Channel 8. And this family tragedy has shaken an entire community. Many people are questioning how this could happen. News Channel 8's Aaron Cox is live in Waterford with that part of the story. Aaron? You know, Jocelyn, this is the story of a grandmother who just did not want her eight-year-old grandson walking across these tracks to get to the school bus stop right at the top of the street. But you know what? It turns out even the school buses don't think it's safe enough to cross these tracks. So this grandmother really had no choice. My mother hates those tracks. My mother stops way ahead of the thing, you know what I mean? But every day that Patricia Metzemacher drove out of her driveway, she would have to cross. It's the only way off Minor Lane. So she was on her way, taking Zachary to the bus stop like she does every day. That's what I mean about these tracks. Something had to happen. 61-year-old Metzemacher and her 8-year-old grandson, Zachary, were killed in the collision. But four-year-old Courtney was in a car seat. She survived and is critically injured. Family members are stunned. And losing a child, I, I don't know how my cousin's going to deal with it. It's very tough. He's it's tough, too, on the Waterford community. Zachary was a second grader at Great Neck School. His little sister is a student at the Friendship School. Move counselors to the two most affected schools. This grandmother would drive Zachary to the top of the street to catch the school bus. She didn't want him walking over the tracks. And the bus wouldn't come down. The bus comes down for his sister, which is a smaller bus, you know. The bus company says for safety reasons, it won't let the larger school buses cross these tracks. So Patricia Metzemacher had to. Yeah, it's either mechanical error or, you know, something happened to her. To add to this tragedy, Michael lives right next door to his mother. He was one of the first people on the scene. He ran up the tracks, and he says he passed out after he saw his mother's body in the car. To add to all of this, just recently, Michael gave one of his kidneys to his mother, he said, so she could have a fuller life. As for little four-year-old Courtney, she's listed in critical condition tonight at the Connecticut Children's Hospital. Everybody in this Waterford community is really pulling for her. Reporting live in Waterford tonight, I'm Erin Cox, News Channel 8. Today's crash is the first time an Acela train has been involved in an accident in Connecticut. The Acela was first introduced to this region five years ago. The 20 train fleet has seen its share of troubles. Just two years after the service began, the high-speed trains were taken out of service when cracks were found in brackets connecting train units. Service was again suspended this year because of cracks in brake rotors, but resumed in full this August. Stay with News Channel 8 for the latest development and information in this deadly train crash. There has been a major development in connection with this summer's deadly pileup on Avon Mountain. About an hour ago, a judge took swift action and froze the assets of the trucking company accused of causing the crash. Our chief capital correspondent, Mark Davis, is covering late details and joins us live from our Hartford newsroom. Mark? Good evening, Jocelyn Keith. Good evening, everyone from the Hartford newsroom. This is that big, terrible crash at the end of July that involved 20 vehicles and killed four people, including the truck driver. Now, uh, just a little before 5 o'clock, Superior Court Judge Vanessa Bryan issued a restraining order in what's called a pre-judgment ruling. That means the judge says the company involved in the crash cannot sell anything until there's a judgment in this case, after the lawsuits from the victims and the families of the victims have been settled. The revelation last week that the trucking company involved in the firing crash had no insurance leaves victims with no recourse other than to go after the assets of the company, in this case, trucks and equipment. The lawyer for the widow of Chip Stotler of New Hartford, who left five children, made the move and he was joined in court by the Attorney General. We've received at least four phone calls over the last day indicating that they're uh, attempting to actually auction off their vehicles. Uh, absolutely shameful conduct. I can't even believe they're attempting to do this. We want to make sure, and this order will enable us to do so, that these trucks and other assets can be used to pay the victims and their families, at least provide them some measure of justice. 
Now, the DMV pulled the plates off the vehicles of American Crushing and Recycling last week in response to an order from Governor Rell. She issued that order when a second truck belonging to American Crushing was sighted on Avon Mountain in West Hartford, not far from that crash, because of improper equipment and being overweight. We have been unable to reach the attorney for American, Tr American Crushing Company. There are at least 29 victims and survivors of victims involved in this case. Live from the Hartford Newsroom, Mark Davis, News Channel 8. Now for a first look at your forecast. That's right, we've got some uh, changes on the way, Jeff Fox. Yeah, today was a gorgeous day and tonight will be, uh, tonight will be a nice, cool night, but you can see some cloudiness this afternoon from uh, Ansonia Middle School, and I think that clouds will be the trend over the rest of the overnight hours. Temperatures now mostly in the mid 60s through Connecticut. Clouds out to the west and there will be more of those because there's a frontal system and the frontal system has some showers and some thunder showers. Keith and Jocelyn, I do not expect all day rain, but I expect a few hours when we'll have showers and thunder showers and some of those could be briefly heavy. And then on Friday, Big temperature change. Back with that and the rest of the eight-day forecast in a few minutes. All right, we'll see you then. So the Calm on News Channel 8 at 6. These are two little boys sitting in the woods in 1913. How did this postcard make it to their sisters after all this time? I'm Kent Pierce. That story is next at 6. You're watching News Channel 8 at 6. Coverage you can count on. fate of all will be revealed. Lawyer gun. Winner of six Emmys, including Best Drama. Where's Kate? Lost. All new after the Encore season premiere. Tonight, starting at 8, 7 central, only on ABC. Save hundreds, lease or purchase on... Lounge, Avalon, Corolla, Camry, SUV, or truck. Hurry to Steam and Toyota Route 6 Bristol for your number one huge money-saving Toyota deal. Or visit ctautomall.com and save. Raymore and Flanagan presents our Rooms Within Reach event. Storewide savings that come in your style. Great prices at every department with no deposit and no interest till 2008. Whatever your budget, your new room is within reach. With guaranteed delivery in just three days or less, it's your chance to get better furniture sooner than you expected. The Rooms Within Reach event going on now only at Raymore and Flanagan. to perfection is not on any map. It cannot be found in a road atlas. To get there, you set your speed at impossible. And never take your foot off the accelerator. The ES, refine with a passion. At your Hartford New Haven Lexus dealer, 96.5 TIC is giving away a million bucks on the Craig and Company Million Dollar Morning Show. Listen to us tomorrow morning at 7.20 and you could win one million dollars. How do I win? All you need is a birthday. On 96.5 TIC. A million bucks! 96.5 TIC is giving away a million bucks on the Craig and Company Million Dollar Morning Show. Listen to us tomorrow morning at 7.20 and you could win one million dollars. How do I win? All you need is a birthday. On 96.5 TIC. A million bucks! You're watching coverage you can count on. Live on News Channel 8 at 6. The postcard ended up back where it was originally mailed, but two Torrington sisters are not complaining to the post office. Their mother mailed the picture postcard more than 92 <laughs> years ago. News Channel 8's Ken Pierce joins us now with the story of how it ended up back home again. Well, you know, Sylvia and Hazel Wadhams, they collect a lot of different things, postcards among them, and they couldn't believe it when two familiar faces stared back at them from one postcard from the past. Hey, I've yeah. been here 80 years. <laughs> yeah. You're 80 years old, right? That's right. 78 for me. Hazel and Sylvia Wadhams love Torrington history. They've lived through a lot of it, but they're always searching for more, especially old postcards. He had about that many of Torrington. Pretty good selection. Ron Guerrera of Mattituck Antiques had that selection at a postcard show. The Wadham sisters started looking through his stash. And lo and behold, they found a postcard sent uh, by their mother in 1913 to another family friend. When I 
she handed it to me. I said, well, it does look somewhat like James. The two boys on the front are James and Arthur, their two oldest brothers. Sylvia and Hazel recognize that postcard so easily because there's an identical photograph to it in this old family album. There are lots of photos and memorabilia they've kept over the years, including the exact camera their father used to take that photo. He took a lot of family photos. What's special about this postcard is the message on the back written by their mother 92 years ago. Got kind of goosebumps to see that it was our mother's signature. That piece of history brought the past back to life, and that made one antique dealer very happy. Are we search in Connecticut. Uh, postcards, we sh search for our past, we search for uh, a piece of our, our heritage, we search for um, our roots sometimes, and it's nice to know that I was a part of giving them back that uh, privilege. Now that postcard was marked $8, but he gave it to the sisters for free. Sylvia and Hazel say they'll keep looking at Torrington postcards and maybe they'll see more pictures of their family. I'm Kent Pierce, News Channel 8. Mm. Could make up a story that nice. Too. No. Coming on your way next at 6 on News Channel 8, a perfect fall day. This will look at the Morris Cove section of New Haven this afternoon. Question is, is all this good weather going to stick around? Jeff Fox is in with your eight-day forecast when we come back. And if you need any more reinforcement that we're no longer in summer, that we're in fall. During the summer, sunset sometimes is after 830, right? right? Tracy, punch the button. Look what the sun is doing now. Yeah. It's beautiful. 618, but the, yeah, okay. It, it's gorgeous, but it's two hours earlier, or actually more than two hours earlier than it is in the early summer, and uh, we're looking at sunset now in Waterbury. That's a very pretty shot. SkyMax Doppler Network is showing nothing. I have widened out the shot to show even more of nothing than we would. Than we would. That's a strange concept, isn't it? Here's Connecticut. Uh, just a little bit of cloudiness, but look how these clouds are being sucked up from the south. Uh, there will be a southerly flow that's going to bring up the humidity a little bit in the overnight hours. A chance with the humidity, with the dew point coming up and the temperatures coming down, they may meet. So I'm going to put a chance of some patchy fog. This is the big deal for tomorrow. Pretty vigorous cold front. This is being driven by significantly colder air coming from the west. So today we had temperatures that got nicely into the 70s. Tomorrow we're going to have temperatures that only only get in the 60s. Here's the look from the Talcott Mountain Science Center, 64 degrees there. 66 from Our Lady of Mount Carmel in Meriden. Hello, Sister Trudy. Uh, I don't know if you can see it really well, but that's Castle Craig there. I'll get a better shot when the sun is higher in the sky. It's really pretty there, camera. 66 from St. Anne's School in Bridgeport and at Bloomfield High School looking down at the roof and the horizon. 65 degrees right now. Precision microcast shows little, if anything, tonight. But overnight, in come the clouds. Tomorrow, in come the showers. And where you see the yellows and the reds, the possibility of some thunder showers. By Friday, skies are clear again. But that line is going to come through. We're only going to get a few hours, three or four hours, with a chance of showers or thunderstorms. They, unfortunately, during that time, could be briefly heavy and they could be accompanied by some strong and gusty winds. And I think in this case, the higher in elevation you are, if you're on something mountain road or something hill road, it could be a little bit breezy tomorrow afternoon where you live. Gusty, actually. Turning cloudy, patchy fog overnight, 60s and 50s. Cloudy, patchy fog at wake-up time through the day tomorrow. Showers and some thunder showers scattered afternoon probably. Gusty, temperatures near 70. Here's the Storm Team 8-day forecast. Mid-60s, that's the cool down after this front goes through. Actually, more, more succinctly, 40s overnight tomorrow night, averaging statewide. Then 60s on Friday looks like a nice weekend on the way with temps in the 70s and sunny skies. Sunset still up. Mm-hmm. Beautiful stuff. Thank Pretty. you. All right, we've got uh, no offense, the Yankees, the Red Sox, and the Indians. So this is basically three teams fighting for two playoff spots, right? And it doesn't get any more exciting every day. It just never spreads out a little. We'll, we'll have the whole story when we come back with sports. Stay with us. We are 99.1 PLR. Connecticut's yeah. number one rock. PLR.
Well, nothing has happened to lessen the tension in baseball's pennant races in the American League. Three teams vying for two playoff spots. All of them have five games left in the season. All have the exact same record. Indians, Red Sox, and Yankees. Red Sox and Yankees play each other last three games, meaning both need wins in their next two games before that series starts. Something neither team could get last night. Yankees losing to Baltimore. Red Sox losing to Toronto. So they both try against the same opponents tonight. The Indians play Tampa, the team they lost to last night. So <laughs> get out your tums and enjoy tonight's baseball. It's exciting. Well, a tougher anti-drug policy needs to be implemented in baseball sooner than later. The words of Senator John McCain today during a Senate hearing on steroids. Five baseball Hall of Famers, along with the commissioners and union chiefs from the major professional sports leagues were there. The goal? pushing to clean up sports from performance-enhancing drugs. With a game against Army this weekend, you just know that the UConn football team is studying game film, getting to know the Black Knights forward and backwards. But just how well do the Huskies really know their upcoming opponent? Well, jo John Pearson set out to find out. All right, Matt, it's, it's quiz time here again. Uh, how many times have UConn and Army met on the football field? Uh, I'd probably say three times. Uh, three? Three. Going on four. Excellent answer. How many times has UConn won? I want to say three, maybe two. Two, two is the right answer. I'll give you half credit. <laughs> Who is Army's arch rival on the football field? Navy. Navy. That's easy, Navy. Definitely Navy. Uh, Navy. That was too easy, wasn't it? Yes, sir. True or false, Army's last bowl appearance was in 1996. Oh, man. 96. I'd say false. True. Uh, false. True. Excellent. Independence Bowl. I guess I'm wrong. <laughs> if you say true, I can edit it and make you look like you know your tongue. All right. True. <laughs> and now they're going to get tough. What president of the United States lettered for Army football in 1912? Uh, oh. <laughs> Eisenhower. <laughs> Are you cheating? Yes. <laughs> Eisenhower, is that the white? I think that's it, the white Eisenhower. It's pretty good. You've been studying the Army media guy, haven't you? Just a little bit. I don't think I would have gotten that. No, that's hey, some tough yeah, questions. James Hargrave's got it. All right, very nice. <laughs> Jeff? All right, uh, looking out to the west on the uh, national satellite and radar combination, you can see a front that's just moved through uh, the uh, Chicago area into Indianapolis. That's tomorrow afternoon's weather. Going to have some showers and some thunder showers scattered about. Some of them will be briefly heavy, then turning markedly colder by tomorrow night and Friday. All right, thank you. And we continue to follow some breaking news out of Hartford. We've been following all afternoon. This is a live look at Hartford Hospital, the scene of a prisoner escape late this afternoon. Brian Briard was caught a short time ago. We will have continuing coverage coming up at 10 on UPN 9 and again right here on Nonstop News at 11. And that'll wrap it up for this edition of News Channel 8 at 6. Tune in for Nonstop News at 10 on UPN 9. And be sure to watch us here on Nonstop News at 11. Enjoy the rest of the evening. Toyota in Milford, the